Shalom. I want to give all praise to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, who's the true living and power of this world, who the world England calls God, that's Yahweh, the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, the name of his only begotten Son, who the world England calls Jesus Christ. All right. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And peace, blessing, and salutations to the brethren out here pushing his word in sincerity and truth. The Bayah Dawada, House of David, the elect. Uh, and those scattered abroad, the confusion of faith. And those few sisters listening in humility. Alright, Shalom. Okay, so I'm going to get into a lesson that's long, long overdue. Alright, um, and that's about the heavenly chariots. Alright, the Lord's vehicles. Okay, because there's been a lot of misconceptions that Esau has put out in the earth to show us one thing, but it's contrary to the, the holy book. All right. So uh, the Hebrew Israelites were out here to prophesy the downfall of America. And uh, the world needs to know by way of uh, which ways it shall be taken down. Okay, so the Lord is going to come back in his full power. Okay, so this is Psalms. 104 verse 3 who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters who maketh the clouds his chariot all right so who, who maketh the uh, clouds his chariot that's what the lord does you know and uh we constantly talk about you know a famous movie that esau put out called independence day where the heavenly bodies uh you know came back with the chariots and in that movie, they try to make it seem like there are aliens, all right? And these weird, abominable creatures are going to surface from those things, all right? But sadly to their belief, there's going to be giant angels and Yahawashah returning from those. And I, I got a few scriptures lined up, but um, I guess this wasn't even in there, but I'm going to get this real quick. So this is Ezekiel 1 and 4. And I looked and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself. And the brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof as the color of amber and out of the midst of uh, fire. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this is their appearance like they had the likeness of a man. All right, so this begins to describe the uh, angels and the uh, chariots, all right? Chariots in the ancient Hebrew, that's marakab, all right? Those are chariots. And so I'm just gonna hit up two points on this. Um, to, one, to prove that the angels are dark-skinned men, all right? They have uh, different likeness, you know, different uh, animals and things, but they also have uh, the appearance of a man, okay? Um, faces and hands and feet and arms and legs all right so this is ezekiel 1 chapter verse 7 and their feet were straight feet and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass all right they sparkled like the color of burnished brass so burnished brass that's a dark color all right it's just like yahawashah burnished brass burned brass all right, that's the same thing as Jehoshaphat. The angels are dark men. Okay, and I'm going to jump over to uh, verse 15. Now, as I behold, beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a barrel, and they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work were work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel okay so um as you see on the screen they got a lot of different you know forms but that's the ufos man well we call them ifos identify flying objects because we know what they are you know um the heavenly chariots can uh change form they can come in and come out they can disappear and reappear okay and you know there are spirits within themselves okay there are vehicles like none else like nothing this world has ever seen okay and this is verse 17 when they went they went upon their four sides and they went 
and they turn not when they went. All right, so when the uh, chariot goes and it stops, it can make a quick left or it can make a quick right. All right, and that's what that's the power of the chariots. You know what I'm saying? You see them speeding across the scene. You know, they don't have to uh, have brakes and things like that. All right, and they don't have to make a big left or a big right like cars do or like airplanes do. All right, they can turn uh, without even with the drop of a dime. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them. All right, so those are the lights and the, uh, the concentrated fire with the, uh, you know, their warships. Ultimately, their deliverance uh, ships and their warships at the same time. Okay, and those vehicles have been around since the beginning of time. All right, even when we were led out of Egypt, I want to prove that. This is Exodus chapter 13, verse 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them the night, to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. All right, so those are the chariots, man. You know, uh, being able to be in the pillar of a cloud, I just said that the uh, he, he come with clouds in his chariots. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, that's the spirit of the Lord, man, coming in those uh, heavenly bodies. And the pillar of a cloud to lead them by the way. And by the night in the pillar of fire to give them light. All right. So he was leading us all along the whole time. And, you know, this, the Lord shows those chairs to who, whom he shows them to. He allows them to be. If he doesn't want you to know they're there, you're not going to know they're there. All right. But he's he's watching this. And I'm going to get that scripture in a moment. Okay. So this is uh, Exodus 14 and 20. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and a darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these. So that the one came not near the other all the night. All right. So the Lord had the uh, chariots light up for the Israelites. Okay. But for the Egyptians, they wouldn't do the same thing. They were dark to them. You know, they let you know that they can light one side of the chariot. They can darken the other side. You know, he can concentrate his power in the direction in which he sees fit. You know, those chariots are like no kind of technology that this earth has ever seen or can even possibly fathom to try to manifest. Okay. All right, this is Psalm 68 and 34. Ascribe ye strength unto Yahweh. His excellency is over Israel, and his strength is in the clouds. Okay, so the Lord is, is going to show his strength, man. He's going to show his strength. All right? A demon-like power. Alashadja. All right? And that's who they're going to know him as again. You know, that's what the ancients called him, a demon-like power, Alishadja, man. And he's going to show them, uh, he's going to show them that again, man, like never before. Okay. And those, those chariots are, are plentiful, man. You know, uh. Esau, he can what? Come up with, uh, got a hundred tanks, you know, got 200 uh, helicopters, got 300 stealth planes, all right? Got uh, 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 10,000 men, foot soldiers, you know what I'm saying? But the Lord is coming, the Lord deals with small numbers on this earth, but the Lord is coming deep, man. And real talk, he didn't even have to. 
That's the power of the Lord, man. He really is coming back to show his true strength. It's a lock yet. He's coming back to show his true strength, man. Because, uh, you know, the Lord can send one of those chariots if he wanted to. All right? He can send one of those chariots to do all his work. So lock you. Bear with me for a moment, y'all. Just trying to get this together. All right. You know, the Lord could send one of those chariots if he wanted to, man. And destroy this whole planet if he wanted to. But, you know, and that's a lot of things the people uh, get confused as well. They think that, you know, when the Lord does come back, you know, that he would destroy something so precious that he made. You know, but he he made the world for our sakes. But nonetheless, I'm going to cut the, all of that right now with people thinking that the he's coming to destroy the world. All right, this is Ecclesiastes 1 and 4. One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. All right, so he's coming to destroy Babylon the Great, which is known as America. All right. America is the one that's going to be destroyed. The uh, That old Israel is going to be destroyed. You know what I mean? So, uh, the new heaven, the new earth can uh, come out of heaven. I come out of the skies, all right? This, the kingdom of Israel, all right? The elect. Okay? You know, these, the... Uh, You know, they when Ezra was prophesying about, you know, the char chariots, he fashioned them up into like a mountain coming out of the earth, man. So these these chariots are huge. They're large, man. They can be small. They can be large. Whichever size the Lord deems them to be, you know, but that that fathership is going to captivate. It's going to smite and slay and you know men sh men men's hearts shall melt and fail all right and this is zechariah five and one then i turned and lift up mine eyes and behold and behold and looked and behold a flying roll and he said unto me what seest thou and i answered i see a flying roll the length the length thereof is 20 cubits and the breadth thereof is 10 cubits all right, so that a flying roll, man. That's that wheel within a wheel. All right, the flying roll. Then said he unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. All right, that's the curse that's going forth over the face of the whole earth. Those chariots are going to come, come deep, man. And I actually uh, forgot my scripture that I meant to hit with that, you know. That's the curse that's going forth over the whole earth. This is Psalm 68 and 17. The chariots of the Most High are 20,000. Even thousands of angels. All right? That's what the Lord said. The chariots of the Most High are 20,000. Even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai in the holy place. All right. So I just told you in Exodus, the Lord was with us then. You know, he's with us now, man. You know, except the, the and the cloud is still following us. The men of the Lord. I don't want to rot 
is still following us. The angels are still surrounding us. The chariots of the Most High are 20,000. And that's, you know, there are more chariots than that, man. You know, the Lord's just giving an idea that it's hundreds of thousands of these, man. These chariots are deep, man. And they're coming back to destroy. All right, back to Zechariah 5 and 3. For everyone that stilleth shall be cut off as on this side according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side according to it. All right, so these heathens are about to get cut off, man. Esau for stealing a man and bringing them on, bringing them into Babylon. You know, these other heathens for all that they've done to our nation. All right, they're going to be cut off. I will bring it forth, saith the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai of hosts, Tazel Lord of hosts. And it shall enter into the house of the thief, and to the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof, and the stones thereof. So it's going to be utterly destroying things, man. To the timber and the stone, the wood, the brick, the mortar, it's going to destroy it all, man. And who's the house of the thief? Esau, man. Babylon the Great. That's the house of the thief, man. All right. He stole the Lord's uh, apple of his eye, man. The children of Israel. Okay. And these devils have to perish for what they've done. This is Daniel 7 verse 13. I saw in the night visions and behold, one like the son of man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him. All right. Daniel's prophesying about Yahweh Shai, man. He said he came with the clouds of heaven. That's how the Lord is about to make his return. Okay. The Lord is coming back with gruesome power man with gruesome power nothing that have this world will not be able to understand comprehend and even in their movies they cannot fashion what the lord is going to truly look like you know and what those chariots are going to look like these movies try to depict that but they can't capture it no matter how many megapixels no matter how many graphic designers they have they can't capture the glory of the Lord. This is Jeremiah 4 verse 13. Behold, he shall come up as clouds, and his chariot shall be as a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe unto us, for we are spoiled. Alright, so he's prophesying about your house shot too. He comes up as clouds, man. So all of these people that that didn't that said that uh Yahushai was not prophesied in uh, in the Old Testament, man, there's so many scriptures in the Old Testament talking about Yahweh Shai, man. All right, and he's returning with clouds, man. His first time he came as a a meek lamb, all right, and the next time he's coming as a fierce lion, man, the lion of Judah, Yahweh. All right, Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. Alright? He's coming with fire, man. And his chariots like a whirlwind, man. Fast. Furious. Not like the movie, man. This is real fury, man. To render his anger with fury. And his rebuke with flames of fire. Alright? That concentrated laser beams, man. That's what's coming. The Lord's not coming to plead with these devils by way of peace. All right. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many, man. These demon heathens are going to fall by the wayside. Okay. Innumerable amounts. All in death and preparation to serve their, their labor, man. To serve their time of. Uh, tribu uh, righteous tribulation and righteous anguish 
so they can get a dose of the things that Israel has been through, man. And I don't want uh, and Thawada Abba for keeping us, man. Keeping his promise to the children of Israel that he would not leave us nor forsake us, man. All right. Lord, the Lord is about to make his coming. You know, when I was on the highways and byways the other day, a demon tried to say, uh, you know, that this it'll take a long time for this word to reach the uh, four corners of the earth. And, you know, I told him, like, oh, just because he only saw me alone, he thought that it would take forever in order for this word to go out. Right. But see, demons like that are sadly mistaken. Are sadly mistaken, man. They don't know that the Lord is working in all facets, man, through all men, through all cities and countries and states. The Lord is working, man. 